So, who will you be pulling yours with? No cheating. The desirable contents must be one fair and square. But if you would like a tip to ensure the odds are in one's favour, I can tell you later. So, why are we so enamoured with these brightly coloured cardboard tubes with their curious contents and bangs? Like many of the amazing inventions you take for granted, you have the industrial Victorians to thank. You really do owe us a huge thank you. Tom Smith a London-based baker and confectioner produced wedding cakes and sweets from his shop in Clerkenwell in the 1840s. He was enjoying a trip to Paris when he discovered the French bonbon, a sugared almond wrapped in a twist of tissue paper. Deciding to sell them in his shop, he was disappointed with slow sales, so he tried to promote them as love tokens, adding a little romantic message. Still, the English were not of a mind to buy them. So how did we get from sweets to the cracker? In the 1850s, Tom decided to replace the bonbon with a small gift, such as a fan or a piece of jewellery, but he still needed to make his product unique. Legend has it that sat by the fire one evening, Tom was inspired to add a crackle as a burning log was spitting and cracking, although this may be a rather romantic addition to the tale, as it's thought that he purchased the recipe for the small cracks from Brock's fireworks. Nonetheless, the log story certainly helped the public warm to this new range of novelties launched in 1861, which he named Bangs of Expectation. These novelties were named Cossacks, as the sound when pulled resembled the crack of the Cossack soldier's whip. When Tom died in 1869, his growing cracker business was taken over by his three sons, Tom, Walter and Henry. It is Walter you can thank for making you wear that paper hat for the duration of your Christmas meal. <laughs> Almost certainly the inspiration for the inclusion of a hat being the 16th century Twelfth Night tradition of a foe, king or queen being appointed to oversee the proceedings. Some say it signifies the three wise men or it could have originated from the European tradition of topping epiphany cakes with a paper crown. You decide which it is. But really, ordinary people wearing crowns? <laughs> One is certainly not amused. With their growing popularity, a range of themed crackers were added. But these loud novelties were not originally intended solely for Christmas. Crackers were produced for bachelors and spinsters, containing gifts like false teeth and wedding rings. I understand the rings, but false teeth? Ooh. Later, there was a range of suffragette crackers, depictions of war heroes, and even the silent movie star Charlie Chaplin. Crackers were also made to commemorate occasions such as coronations. I believe that my descendants still have special crackers made for them in your time. Of course, the very elite of society need to be catered for, such as the millionaire's crackers. Inside was a solid silver box containing gold or silver jewellery. I should just mention that Tom Smith wasn't the only confectioner who claimed to have the idea for the Christmas cracker. Around the time of his fateful visit to the French capital, Italian-born Godente Sparaghia Napane, based in London, and the father of actor and suffragette Maud Sennett, was establishing himself as a confectioner, but also claimed to be the oldest maker of Christmas crackers in the United Kingdom. To be fair, he had established his company in 1846, a year before Smith, giving him the best rival claim to the cracker crown, but his legacy has been lost to history, and Tom Smith has emerged the king of the paper crown. As the popularity increased, others began making these snapping crackers, and the rest, as they say, is history. Of course, you all associate crackers with terrible jokes. Well, that wasn't a Victorian invention. The small messages of love poetry, mottos and snippets of history evolved in the 1920s into witticisms, which I believe have descended into awful, groan-worthy riddles and jokes, such as, Who hides in the bakery at Christmas? a mince pie. And why are Christmas trees so bad at knitting? 
because they always drop their needles. <laughs> Dear me, I can hear the groans from here. So, will you all be sitting around the Christmas table, poised ready to pull your cracker? My husband and I certainly will. Oh, and I promise to tell you my secret to winning the contents of my cracker every time. Simply who could possibly say no to Queen Victoria? <laughs>